Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's see. Well, let's get started tonight. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about thankfulness. All right? So, Father, we just thank you right now for the opportunity to stand here to minister your word. Father, I thank you for the anointing that you place on each of us as we share your word. And Father, I just thank you right now that our lives will be changed, mine as well, that a, a new understanding and a, um, a deeper understanding of your uh, goodness and your mercy and all the things that we have to be thankful for will come to each of us tonight as we share in the word, minister the word. And Father, we thank you that everything that's said and done will bring you glory, bring you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so let's see here. Um, if you'll turn with me to uh, 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter 3, I'm probably going to be coming out of this sweater in a little bit, it's <laughs> nice and warm up here. <laughs> um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. How many would you say we're probably living in some of the last days? Perilous times are upon us, it seems, especially, um, I guess, in the Middle Eastern area and in our United States, it's sad to say. There's a, a, a plan the enemy has constructed, but I believe um, that God is bigger than the enemy's plan. So no matter what the enemy has planned for our United States, I believe that God is good and in control no matter what we're seeing. This morning in our kids class I taught on faith and we had this box full of items that they had to be blindfolded and fill inside the box and we figure out what it was they were feeling of just by feeling and had to think about it and figure it out. And you know I was really amazed I had six items in there Two of them figured out five of them, and two of them uh, figured out four of them. So I was very proud of them. And um, so anyway, it was, it was a good class, but it gave them a little more understanding about faith. And you can't go by what you see, you know. You've got to go by what um, you know God's Word says, and you've got to stand firm on what God's Word says. And know what you see in the word is what is real and not maybe what you see in this natural. Because what you see in this natural can change. Amen? Amen. All right. So here we are. Back to uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1, verses 1 and 2. Uh, th this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Boy, are we in the last times. Covetous <laughs> both boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Whew, we're hitting a home run here. <laughs> Unthankful and unholy. Dear Lord, help us. Help our, help our world, you know. We're living in this right now. And tonight I want to talk about how important being thankful and walking around with a thankful heart, how important that is to your faith. Many times people think that's just a little side journey, thankfulness. You know, oh, that sounds so nice. No, being thankful is very vital to how your faith works, okay? We got to walk around with a thankful heart. I heard someone say this, and I just loved it. 
You can change the atmosphere in your life if you decide to quit finding out what's wrong and start being thankful for what is right. Isn't that good? I think it's good because we're living in a day. I, I told my husband the other day, I said, people are just looking for things to be wrong rather than looking for things that are right. I said that and then I heard this person say this and I went, that's what I said. <laughs> Basically, you know. <laughs> But, but we're living in a time where um, people are, are just, they want to find something wrong with someone rather than find the 99 things that are right with someone. Isn't that, you know, don't you see that a lot? People, you know, even, even in social media, oh, they're just looking for things wrong with people instead of celebrating um, all the things that are right. And with ministers, you know, oh, the world just loves to tear down ministers and loves to find things wrong with ministers and loves to, you know, see things that maybe they're not perfect at because no one is perfect, right? We're all striving to be perfect and we will one day, but we are all, even the preachers, working at, on being perfect. So... You know, not everything is going to be right with any of us. And so anyway, the world right now, though, is like hung up in this mode of, oh, I can't wait to find out what's wrong with you or what you've done wrong or, or how you're not what you said you were or how you didn't do this right. Or, you know, um, I remember one time I gave someone money to send their child to summer camp. I was so excited for that child to send them to Dry Gulch. Oh, how a kid's dream. And I want you to know that person said that I thought I was better than everybody else <laughs> because I did that. Your brain goes tilt and your heart goes, that hurt, you know? You know, that was not my thought at all. My thought was I wanted to bless this child. Amen. I wanted it to be a blessing. And you know, the world looks for things to twist and to be unthankful about. But tonight we're going to talk about what we have to be thankful for, okay? And how important that is. Learning how to be thankful to God is so important to your walk of faith. Let's look at a story in uh, Luke chapter 17. Let's look with me in Luke chapter 17. Is this my fresh water? Wonderful. Luke 17, we're going to start with verse 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, where, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Not just cleansed, but whole. I believe his faith was so strong because of his thankful heart that he found himself walking away from there whole, totally healed and whole, restored, you know? Because if, if you're familiar with leprosy, it has a tendency to eat parts of your body off as it does its work through your body. And uh, anyway, this guy left there 
whole. Uh, one translation actually says um, that he walked away from there saved. He, was, he, he got the whole package, <laughs> you know, because he had a thankful heart. He was only 10% of the people that he helped there walked away with a thankful heart and got a full package. You know what I'm saying? He was cleansed and made whole. But what did he do? He gave thanks to God. He gave glory to God. He uh, worshiped God and thanked him. And how we are in our hearts, our thankfulness towards God, is a direct reflection of what's going on in our hearts. Okay, that's just a little side statement there. But it's the truth. How, how thankful we are to God. And let me just put it another area. Not only thankfulness to God, but thankfulness to people in our lives. People who are in our lives that are blessings. I heard a story about a, a minister who was very unthankful because this was when he was 17 years old. And he was a preacher's son. And he was not very thankful. He thought everything in the world was going wrong for him, and he was just bummed out about a lot of things. And uh, anyway, he ended up getting himself in trouble. You know, preacher's sons get themselves in trouble. Preacher's daughters get themselves in trouble. People get themselves in trouble, because preacher's sons and daughters are people, right? They're not perfect either. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> he, um, he ended up, preacher's son got a phone call. The preacher got a phone call from the jail. He was in jail. He had been arrested, 17 years old. And his father, had, it was church night. His father said, I'll be there after church. Went on and preached and came and got him. And his mother said, they were going to send him for a summer trip. This was in the late, near the end of the school year. Going to send him for a summer trip to Africa. He said he got there, and he found himself realizing how unthankful he was for all that he had. He had so much in life, and he couldn't see what he had for what he didn't have. And he had such an unthankful heart. But as he sat there, he went to the um, services. They had to walk four um, hours to get to the services. And he says, and he said, I worked on my attitude the whole way there because I was not very thankful. Four-hour walk. And he got there, and they're sitting in a dirt floor built hut kind of thing for the church. They're sitting on logs to listen to the word being preached, you know? And he got to thinking about what he had back home, you know? <laughs> he had pews and he had soft cushions on them and carpet and all those things. And it, he realized he had an encounter with God that summer in Africa. Anybody know who that preacher is I'm talking about? Anybody know? Mark Hankins. Would you ever believe it? Powerhouse minister now and there he was just fella in trouble and anyway God worked in his life and we all know the rest of the story and uh, but anyway he began to realize he had been so unthankful and then he began to thank God and he began to realize what he had to be thankful for and he began to uh, open his heart up and God met him and his life was changed right there in Africa because he had an encounter with God and a heart change and an attitude change and a realization that he had so much to be thankful for. And do you know we have so much to be thankful for? We do. We have so much. And the enemy would try to tell us, you don't have this. You don't have that. This isn't working. That isn't working. This isn't this, and this isn't this size, and this isn't that, or whatever he may tell you, whatever he may try to say. But we've got to remain thankful. We've got to remain with a right attitude. We've got to remain realizing 
our help comes from the Lord. Um, Psalms, when you give thanks, it says in uh, Psalm 67. Let's turn there. Let's turn there. Psalm 67. Like I said earlier, our thankfulness has so much to do with our faith and with getting uh, the things that we're believing for, getting to see them come to fruition in our lives, in our church's life, in our family's life, in our uh, work life, wherever it is we're believing God for change and things. Psalm 67 verses 5, 6, and 7 says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So we've got to say with our mouths our thankfulness. We've got to speak it. We've got to talk about God and his goodness. When we're at work, when we're in the grocery store, wherever we are, we can't be silent, but we've got to talk. Um, another thing, expression I heard is unexpressed, let me think, how did it go? Unexpressed thankfulness is not thankfulness at all. You know, you may think that you might be thankful, but if you haven't expressed it, wh whether you're uh, expressing it to God or people that surround you, people he's placed in your lives, if you haven't thanked them lately, if you haven't uh, given them uh, thanks and, and said, thank you for doing this in my life, thank you. You know, I was taken back. Um, you know how sometimes you just sit around and you kind of get caught up with somewhere you were years ago or whatever. And something happened, I think maybe I saw something on Facebook. It may have been when it was our anniversary and our pastor that married us, he's my friend on Facebook. <laughs> Imagine that. He's, he is still my friend. He's always been my friend. And because uh, that, that's the church I got saved in. And um, anyway, he commented and told us happy anniversary and everything. And I was just taken back to the church and my night getting born again. And, you know, it was so spectacular to me. We were having a revival in that church. Of course, at that time I wasn't attending the church. I found out about the revival after I became part of the revival, you know, <laughs> and got to see other people get born again. And I'm still friends with many of those people. We've gone different places and everything, but it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful to have Facebook to be able to stay friends with those people and communicate and everything. But I was taken back to the night that I was born again and how thankful I am that Mr. J. Melvin Moore took the time to sit there with me. He sat on the floor because I was falling out in the floor. I got saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, laid out in the floor. I mean, we're talking Baptist girl here. <laughs> we're talking girls never seen anything like this before in her life. And um, I'm laid out on the floor singing in some foreign language that I don't even know. Four songs later, I open my eyes, and there's this wonderful, wonderful elderly man. Beautiful gray hair, beautiful smile on his face. Oh, I can see it today. He's gone to be with Jesus now, and I know he's still smiling. But um, I woke up, and there he was. He was right there in my face because he's down on his knees. And I thought, I'm so thankful he was there. I'm so thankful that I didn't come out of all that <laughs> going, looking at the ceiling and going, what happened to me? But no, he was there, and he was ready to minister to me and tell me about how much God loves me, and he did. He told me how much God loves me. And I remember thinking, oh, God, I'm so thankful for him, and I'm so thankful that he just shines with your glory. And it became one of my prayers. I used to say, 
Lord, I want to shine with your glory like Brother J. Melvin Moore. I just thank you, Lord. And you know, you begin to thank the Lord for things, and as you do, you're really declaring what his word says about you. You begin thanking him for what you can have because his word says you can have things. And so you find yourself, am I messing up the cameras? Am I good? <laughs> okay, um, I'll go back over here and be a good girl. <laughs> but anyway, um, you, you find yourself where the things that you're thanking him for, you're just reiterating what he says in his word that you can have. And that's why it's all connected to your faith. It's all connected. Your thankful heart is connected. Because if you walk around, Dad blessed it. Why does this always happen to me? Why am I doing this is happening? Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, the word says blah, 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 blah. Yep, glory to God. Say one, two, three steps. I'm back out here. Dad blown it. This happened again. What am I going to do? Oh, woo. Why did the kids do that? You know, if you find yourself always grumbling and being unthankful rather than what comes out of your mouth is thanksgiving to God and you find yourself making yourself be thankful in your voice and you begin to say what the word says, you'll find your faith take a new level. Amen? It will. It will. I promise you it will. Um... Let's see. First Chronicles 16.8. Let's turn there. I put me a few little markers in here so I can get to them faster. First Chronicles 16 and verse 8 says, um, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. So when we're walking around being thankful to the Lord and thanking him and thanking him for all that he's done in our lives, all he's provided in our lives, when we walk around and do that, we make his deeds known among the people, the people that hear us. Um, back to Mark Hankins, when he was a young boy, um, his mother used to, She'd be in the, he'd bring his friends over, you know, it's just before he had his encounter with God. And um, he'd bring his friends over, and she would be in the kitchen just singing and worshiping the Lord while she's washing dishes and cooking and doing whatever. And he's like, Mama, I wish you would shut up, you know. <laughs> he's got his friends over. He's, you know, a young teenager. He's a little embarrassed. Here, Mom is in there worshiping the Lord again, you know. But um, if we will... Let his thankfulness and our praises to him for all that we're thankful for come out of our mouths on a continual basis. I believe somewhere in there it says to give thanks always, you know, right? Always, always giving thanks. If we'll let that be a part of our lives where we're always giving thanks, we're always lifting his name, it will affect people because people will know about his deeds. People will know about his goodness. People will hear about his goodness. People will uh, be able to have an encounter. Amen? And they'll see also his glory on you because as you begin to lift up and talk about him and his goodness and all he's done for you, oh my goodness, what a change it will be in your life and what a change it will be for the people that surround you. Um, I got a, a few things off the internet that I put together and uh, anyway technical difficulties and whatever you know you know that moment where you have to be thankful <laughs> you go to print something and it says ink is low <laughs> will not print please buy cartridge <laughs> that was my before church event yes glory to God but if you would like for me to send it to me to you, if you'll give me your email address, I'll be glad. But anyway, it's a, a list that um, I put together. I think I have it on here, so I could read some of it to you. Give me just a second. 
here we go. Um, it's a list of things to thank God for. Of course, it's a partial list because you never, never, ever can think of all the things you can thank God for. And then another partial list of ways to thank and praise God. You know, I mean, a lot of times we just think it's at church that we can praise him and thank him. Or it's when we have a special guest speaker. Or it's when we have this really great service where we're, everybody's dancing and screaming and running. But it can be a regular day. And we can thank God in the midst of what could be a very trying time in our lives. But if we'll lift our voices and thank him for his goodness, we will praise ourselves out of just about um, any situation that the devil could throw. We can praise ourselves out of it. Amen. Lillian Yeomans has um, a, a healing book, and she has in there what's called the praise cure. And what that is is where you begin to praise God and thank him and declare what his word says and just worship him and praise him. And before you know it, you find yourself, whatever it was you were dealing with is cured. They had people back in, um, and you know, we're going to have this again. This isn't back in. It's not going to be back in the whenevers. It's going to be right here and now we're going to see these things happening. And we're beginning to see these things happening. But as people begin to lift up and praise the Lord and, and we get past this age where we've had um, so many ungrateful hearts and ungrateful uh, generations even of people who have, so, so, um, have been so self-absorbed that they haven't really felt they needed God. We're going to get to the place where we're seeing people are crying out and reaching out for God. And we're not talking about just Christians. We're talking about people that don't know God. We're talking about people who didn't want to know God. And they're going to be calling out to him. And it's going to be because uh, we're going to see people begin to praise God and thank God for things that he's done for them. They're going to catch on. They're going to hear it. And it's going to affect them as well. Anyway, there went my screen. It went away. Okay, here we go back to it. But here we see that it says uh, here on this list that we can thank God for his righteousness and his holiness. We can thank him for his marvelous works. We can thank him that he's healed our bodies. We can thank him that he's good and he's merciful. We can thank him that he's the God of hope. When you're in... Uh, despair, and I know faith people say I'm not ever going to be in despair. But I'm telling you, the midnight hour comes. And when you're in the midnight hour, you can lift your hands up and thank God that he delivers you in that time. Amen. How many's ever been in a midnight hour? Yeah, I've been in a midnight hour. And I mean... The only thing you can do is worship and praise and thank the Lord that he's already delivered you. Even when it looks like nothing could change, nothing could come through, God always comes through. And we can lift our hands and thank him. We can thank him that we have joy. We can thank him that he's great and worthy of praise. We can thank him that he's full of blessings and benefits. He's full of, uh, the word is full of commandments that we can follow. We can thank him that he is faithful. Oh, that's one of my favorite things to thank the Lord for, that he is faithful, faithful, faithful. I, amen, amen. He is so faithful. When everyone has let you down, he will never fail you. It may look like it's failing, but he will never fail you. Amen? We can thank him for his uh, preserving power. We can thank him for his sustaining power in our lives. We can thank him for strength in our bodies. We can thank him that we've been blessed with a family. We can thank him we've been blessed with a church. 
We can thank him that we've been blessed with life. We can thank him that we've been blessed with friends. Amen? We can thank him. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I left my list. I just got to go on away there. We can thank him that his word is true. His word is not a lie. His word is true. And we can thank him for that. We can thank him that his thoughts are deep and many. Amen? He is so full of, of so many good thoughts towards us. Amen? The word tells us in Jeremiah that he knows the, uh, get it straight, the plans and the purposes for our lives. He's given us an expected end. Amen? That was a little mixed up, but you got the essence of it. We can thank him that we have an expected end. And it's good. Amen? It is good. Glory to God. I could go on and on and on. But Psalm, if you want to read a bunch of them, Psalms is full of reasons to give thanks to God. David's heart was overflowing with thanksgiving to God. And I just got on the first page, and that's it. So it looks like that's all we're going to do. But um, let me read one more scripture for you. Um, and that is, where is it? Got it somewhere. I just have to find it. Bear with me. Here we go. Um, Acts 26, 17 says, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles to whom I'm sending you to open their eyes so that they turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and share among those who are sanctified by faith in me. God has qualified us. We can thank him for that. He's qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. He's delivered us. We can thank him. Excuse me. That we're delivered. He has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son. So we have so many things to be thankful for. So many reasons to walk around and thank the Lord and to publicly thank him. Okay? The enemy wants to silence you. He wants to stop you from talking. He wants to... Uh, I read something. I know I keep referring back to Facebook, but I have some minister friends on there, and they say some things sometimes. I just... You want to share everything, but you can't, you know? <laughs> but um, one of them said the other day, he said something about... Um, oh, how did it go? I got to get back to it. Thank, thank you, Lord. It was Shane Philpot. What did he say? Oh, I know. He said that um, basically, I may have shared this, basically that your Facebook post, you've got to say it. It's not good enough just to post it. You know, that's a silent statement. And people read it, but they're all probably people that believe the same way you do. You know, you've got to say, because the Bible is clear about us saying. We're supposed to do what? Three times more saying. Yeah. We're supposed to say what the Word says. And as we say it, we hear the Word ourselves, and it builds faith in us. Amen? Amen. So don't let that silence thing get hold of you. All right. I'm going to stop. I, I probably could keep going for a while because I, like I said, I only got through one page and one scripture on another page. But I want us to, I want us to take just a few minutes and thank the Lord for a few minutes as a group, okay? Just a few minutes. And actually, I want us to do something different. This is really different. I want us each of us, like we're in this little group thing, you know, I want each of us to, I'm back in my classroom, I want each of us to give us two things we can be thankful for. 
each of us. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.